Welcome everyone. These are capacitors and this is what they look like on a circuit diagram. What makes them really frustrating to study today is that we really can't see what's happening inside of them. No! <laughs> I have an idea. What's that? What if we take these things apart? You mean like cut it open and unravel them? Yes, exactly that. And what happens then? Well, when we take it apart, we find that there's two parallel play plates separated by a dielectric material. That sounds an awful lot like the transmission lines we used to study. Very much so. What happens if we can apply that model here? In typical engineering terms, we call this capacitor and its equivalent circuit diagram a lump parameter model. While we call this capacitor a distributed model. We use distributed models of reactive components in our project to gain better insight into their internal behavior during energy conversion processes. We chose to simulate over building a physical circuit is such that simulations allow us to have a finer degree of control over our test circuit. Additionally, measuring the internal behavior of conductors and capacitors is very difficult in practical circuits. So the following plots represent the spatial distribution of the voltage and current waveforms in a capacitor line for different combinations of switching speeds and timings. When we stop charging the capacitor, we notice that the voltage distribution is flat for good timings, however oscillates for bad timings, which is undesirable. Ultimately, timing is more important than switching speed. However, it's noted that the slower your switching speed, the greater your switching loss. So for best efficiency, you should have fast switching speed and good timing. Although timing was extremely important, we also concluded that the magnetic energy stored within an line is fundamental to charging the capacitor. And in fact, the parasitic element that we often overlook might be a lot more important than we think. But how on earth is any of that actually applicable to anything? Well, John, mathematically, our approach can be applied to both inductors and capacitors. Um, right. Inductors have a high impedance and capacitors have a low impedance. Um, what do you think about these? Well, these just look like a bunch of switchboard power supplies. Exactly. Because the main components of a switchboard power supply are just capacitors and inductors, are you saying that our model can now be applied to a more practical circuit? That's exactly it. What we found is that for a certain set of duty cycles, the noise in the output of the converter is substantially low. John, how do we know we weren't making a mistake? Good question. If you take a look up there, we simulated the well-known and robust lump parameter model. If you take a look up here, we then simulated our transmission line model. As you can see, there's pretty much no difference between them. And that's a main basis around the validity of what we're doing. So John, what are the potential impacts of our work? It's a really good question. What we essentially hope to gain from this project is a deeper understanding of how these components play such a large role in the devices that we all use every single day. Ah, so the sorts of things like improving efficiency, reducing size, and optimizing designs. Exactly. Ah, cheers to innovation.